The Roman gladiator games were filled with blood, glory, and hidden darkness, ready to uncover the secrets. It all began with funeral rites. Early Romans believed that shedding blood could calm the spirits of the dead. What started as small, sacred rituals turned into huge public shows by the 3rd century BC. In 264 BC, Rome saw its first recorded gladiatorial contest. This event, though small, set the stage for what would become a core part of Roman culture. As Rome's power grew, so did the games, becoming a way to show off Rome's strength and keep people entertained. Becoming a gladiator was rarely a choice. Most were slaves, prisoners of war, or criminals. Some free men, called octorati, hoping for fame and money. Life as a gladiator was tough. They trained at gladiator schools, called ludi, under strict trainers known as lanistae. The training was hard, focusing on building strength and learning to fight. Gladiators had to master many fighting styles and weapons. Despite the harsh conditions, there was a sense of camaraderie among the fighters. They formed bonds, knowing that their lives often depended on each other during the deadly contests. Gladiator schools, or ludi, were where fighters were made. The training routines were relentless, designed to turn men into skilled warriors. Each day began early with tough exercises to build strength and endurance. Gladiators practiced with wooden swords, perfecting their techniques without the risk of injury. They drilled endlessly, learning different forms of combat, from sword fighting to wrestling. The diet in the ludi was simple but effective. Gladiators ate a lot of barley and beans to keep their strength up. Life in the ludi was hard, but those who excelled could earn fame and even freedom. Game day in Rome was a grand event. The Colosseum could hold up to 50,000 people, all excited for a day of blood and action. The day started with a grand parade called the Pompa, where gladiators marched before the emperor and the crowd. The games began with less violent displays like animal hunts and mock battles. These early acts built excitement for the main event, the gladiatorial combats. By the time the gladiators entered the arena, the crowd was roaring with anticipation. The fights were brutal, a mix of skill and survival. Every clash of swords and drop of blood was met with loud cheers or boos from the audience. Gladiatorial combat was deadly. The matches were carefully planned to be as exciting as possible, often pairing fighters with different skills and weapons. Gladiators fought fiercely, knowing that one mistake could mean death. The injuries were horrific. Gladiators suffered broken bones, deep cuts, and sometimes even lost limbs. Despite the brutality, the combat required great skill. Gladiators had to be both aggressive and defensive to survive. Medical care for injured gladiators was surprisingly advanced. Doctors known as Medici treated their wounds with stitching, cauterization, and herbal remedies. Still, many injuries were too severe, and death was common. The arena wasn't just for men. Female gladiators, known as gladiatrices, also fought. These women were often slaves or criminals, but some were free women seeking fame and fortune. Gladiatrices trained and fought with the same intensity as their male counterparts. Their presence in the arena was a novelty, drawing huge crowds eager to see women in combat. These women faced the same dangers and fought just as fiercely. The games were more than just entertainment. They were a tool for political power. Emperors used them to win favor with the people, distract from political issues, and show their wealth and strength. Hosting grand games was a way for emperors to display their generosity and power. It was also a way to control the people, keeping them entertained and distracted. The games were a spectacle that united the people, creating a shared experience. Emperors used the arena to get rid of rivals and reward loyal supporters. Some gladiators became legends. Spartacus, a gladiator who led a massive slave rebellion, is one of the most famous. His story of defiance against Rome has inspired many tales. Other gladiators, though less known, achieved fame through their skills in the arena. Fighters like Flama, a Syrian slave who won his freedom four times but chose to remain a gladiator, became symbols of strength and resilience. These stories highlight the complex lives of gladiators, 